handball and the officers of handball. Um, I think I'm speaking for Marion and myself, um, handball would be very much part of, I worked, came in Jones would recall, when I started in Crow Park first, I put in some time in handball and I uh, got a good basis there. And um, that's not today or yesterday. I have 37 years service in, in Crow Park. So I um, have qualified as an accountant since then. So as I said, it's a welcome opportunity to talk to yourselves. But I just want to point out as well, we I'm new to the webinar scene since the crisis, since the pandemic and lockdown. But these presentations are done in at county level around the country throughout the year. And I'd welcome any um, of the officers, the handball officers to attend those. We're extending um, to both the ladies Gaelic football, but handball has always been welcome. And I know one or two of you attend from time to time, but it'd be lovely to see more of you attend the treasurer's workshops around the country, more than welcome. Marine is an, an associate and has delivered those um, training training nights, these leadership nights, over a few years now, and that we've other trained associates around the country. But as I said, we're a little bit new to the webinar, and I hope um, you benefit from tonight. And you'll excuse, I don't have a great experience in this front, so hopefully we'll all progress well. Just want to outline what we will cover this evening. Just um, your responsibilities as a treasurer of a club, the financial records and reporting what's to be, what, what the requirements are there, financial management, governance, sources of funding, regulatory obligations, club development, and any other some other information. So that's that's our plan for this evening's meeting, uh, this evening's webinar. And I'll pass you over to Marion, who'll outline the responsibilities of a handball treasurer. Okay, uh, can you can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah. And uh, the responsibilities of the treasurer, club treasurer, and uh, the treasurer is a key officer within a club, within the executive and should be involved in all financial decisions, and I mean all. Uh, there should be no financial decisions made without the presence or the approval of the treasurer. Uh, it's the treasurer's responsibility to report monthly to the executive in writing and also annually at the AGM. Governance is very much part of the treasurer's role. And also, the treasurer should manage and coordinate fundraising. They shouldn't be left just to do the fundraising, but they need to manage and coordinate it and appoint another a, a subcommittee to uh, deal with fundraising and sit on that committee, preferably um, as an active member, but it is not the duty solely of the treasurer to raise funds. Sometimes people think that is. And it's also important that the treasurer adheres to all regulatory obligations. It's very important. Anything to do with finance in the club is, is must involve the treasurer. Cathy? Just, just outline some key dates and registration for handball clubs. The forms are issued by G GA Handball and Crow Park are in Westford House on the 1st of November, issued to the counties. By the 31st of January, the registration forms and the fees are to be returned by the counties. And that fee is 20 euros for adults and 750 for juveniles. That's the fee that's to be returned to GA Handball at national level. It's up to each club to define their own membership fee. You know, one of the questions later on was, you know, how do we raise money? This is the membership fee is an integral part of every club's fundraising. Um, so it, it is worth considering and, uh, you know, depending on what facilities you have, and it varies, it varies significantly. In GA clubs, it's, it varies from 20 euros to 250 euros um, from clubs that have been talking to me. I don't know what the, the range is in handball clubs, but as I said, it is worth um, looking at. The financial year end, is the 31st of October the same as it is for all of all, all GA entities? Um, 
that's from central level down to club level to handball. And I know there's movements afoot with Common Comogiacta to adopt that at their Congress. I think they lost their Congress. I don't know, has it taken place yet? So we're all moving in together on that. Um, now, financial records and reporting. Marion mentioned that to present to your account, to your, to your executive each month, but it's an income and expenditure account and the financial position of the club are the two items that should be submitted to your county executive, you know, on, on a monthly basis. Just what's your income, what's your expenditure and, you know, your bank position, you know, your assets aren't going to change substantially. You know, your bank position, your loan position, if there are loans or liabilities out there, you know, are there debtors, are there creditors? Um, who owes you money? And um, it's important, again, that bank balances are reconciled on a monthly basis. That you know where you are. There's no point in, 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 in sending a copy of the bank statement to your, you know, to your executive and say, that's what we have, because as you know, the, the um, checks may not be presented. There might be outstanding lodgements. So it is important that you have reconciled bank balances at the end of each month. You also have detail of cash in hand if there's floats or if there's petty cash, um, be it 20 euros for whatever, or 100 euros, that it's, you know, it's it's outlined at your executive meeting. Um, credit cards, now we don't recommend credit cards, but if, if there's some substantial reason um, it's important that they are reconciled monthly and um, recorded uh, in the accounts if if it's necessary, I suppose. For flights, it's probably one of the reasons why they might it might be necessary to have a credit card, but they're not recommended. Um, and future financial commitments. When you're presenting it your, to your county executive, uh, your, your club executive, you know, you have to outline, well, you mightn't have the bill for it, it mightn't be shown in the accounts, but that you've committed or agreed to um, or build, you know, build a new wall or whatever, whatever the reason, you know, but those kind of commitments and maybe not even a, a large commitment as building a wall, but other commitments must be outlined. You can't contract to, you know, the, the, the club without the executive's permission. Okay, I'll come in here on club financial statements. Uh, we would recommend that you will use a standard set of financial statements as a guide. Now, I will be say if I could have everybody's email address, I will send this uh, simple format to you, and all the pr all the formulas are in. So I'd be saying to you, please don't change any of the formulas. It's a standard set where. Uh, all your everything is listed on it that you could possibly spend items on it you will never may never use but um, I'm I have it on my uh, laptop on my <clears throat> desktop but I'm just had so much problems earlier I'm afraid if I go out and not get back in but I would take upon myself to in the pack that you're going to get uh, I will uh, attach this uh, format for you and it's a very simple one and I would advise you to use it every month for presentation to, to your executive. Uh, income and expenditure accounts and balance sheet must be presented to the AGM. Now you could turn around and say to us, well, we don't have a balance sheet. Fine, but put on it your cash. I presume that most of you don't have your own grounds. I could be assuming wrong. You're probably using your the, the the football club one, the grounds, but put your bank balances on it, your loans, money owed, debtors and creditors, and that will suffice. Now, have, having to have your accounts audited may not be financially viable, but I will guarantee you as a past, well, as a treasurer of my own club, a past county treasurer, it is vital for, you, for your treasurer to, for ye to get at least the account certified. And now that is not a massive cost. Uh, I can get mine, uh, I get my own certified in, in my club, Emmyvale, 
and the cost is 300 plus fat. It's the best money ever spent because you are protecting yourself, which is what every, good governance does. You must protect yourself when you're dealing with other people's money and to have them certified, I couldn't recommend it highly enough. Uh, finance, financial statements must be uh, submitted to the county committee within four weeks from the date of your AGM. So when you have your AGM four weeks later, you should send the, uh, the financial accounts to the county, board, county committee. I think we'll go to the next one, Cathy. All checks, financial management, all checks must be supported by the appropriate document, documentation and co-sign. You must have two, at least, well, a recommended two signatures from a panel, which can be of four or five people, but they must be supported by invoices or, or, or documentation. Please don't give a check for anything that you don't have backup for. Also, electronic payments should also be co-authorized. Also, it is recommended that the connected persons should not be co-signatories. Now, I did know of a club, I won't name them, where the chairman and the treasurer were, the chairman and the secretary were co-signatories and they were husband and wife. That should not happen. Keep your checkbook secure and please, please don't sign blank checks. There is no excuse for signing a blank check. You could, some people might say, well, if one signature is on it, sure, look at, is that not good enough? Banks change checks with just one signature. It is a bad practice, and I would ask that you don't do it. Allocate a certain time for signing checks. Have this co-signatories close by. Like we're, we're all living, we all live in a small, area or a parish so there should be no problem put getting two people together there's nothing that urgent and i would strenuously say please don't sign blank checks ensure that all your bank mandates are up to date including removing former officers some some clubs it has been known have after having an agm and elected other officers don't change the mandate that's a dangerous thing always update your mandate uh, if, if it needs updating after every AGM. And finally, petty cash must be controlled and floats kept safely. <clears throat> yes. Now, Marion mentioned there about um, expenses and ensuring to have backup, but it's so important to have properly vouched expense claims. There's no point in saying, um, no expenses, I, you know, Cathy Slattery expenses, whatever in the month. It should be, uh, if it's travel expenses, it should detail the mileage to where from and where to. Um, it, if it's, no matter what it's for, there should be a proper vouched expense claim form. And it's not just good enough to sort of say, what it, you know, a, a piece of paper with something on it. So just from a revenue perspective, revenue are looking at clubs. We are, as, as an association, including handball, looking for assistance from the government at the moment because of the financial crisis that we're in um, due to the pandemic. We'll probably come back stronger, but we are looking for assistance. And it, it, as I said, it's important that we are upfront and doing things properly um, and in order, in line with revenue. Just if there is somebody coming in and it might be to clean the courts or whatever it may be, no matter what the story is, there should be they should go through the PAYE system. You can't you can't pay cash. If you do pay cash, it is the handball club or the GA club that's liable to the tax. And revenue have pointed that out to us on several several points and have advised us that they will be looking at clubs and counties going forward. So you know, as I said, and, and it was revenue themselves that said fees cannot be labelled as expenses. If you are paying somebody kind of a, an amount per month or whatever, it can't be referred to just as expenses. It needs to be properly supported. So just to be conscious of the revenue requirements. And as I said, that leads into governance and governance isn't, it's just doing things correctly. Um, 
you know, you shouldn't you shouldn't engage in a, a transaction on your own. As I said, Marion outlined two signatories on a check, two signatories for um, an electronic transfer. Um, that's that's good governance. And again, it's protecting yourself. It's good governance to have your accounts audited. Now, an audit is a fairly expensive thing or, or certified. It's good governance to have them certified. It, you know, and it's important. Governance is a, is a word that's bandied around a lot, but it's basic, straightforward, doing things properly. Um, control purchasing, you know, that you just, no one person goes off and orders a set of, you know, um, singlets or a stock of balls because they were at a great price. That's brought and included at the, at you know, in, agreed at committee level. It's not up to the treasurer, it's not up to the chairperson of the club to go ahead and order this. It should be agreed, you know, and, and it is important if you get cash, say, for membership, that you give a receipt. It's it's important that um, cash is not, you know, there's there's you're not alone when you're counting cash if you're doing a fundraiser. That um, documented procedures are in place. And in the pack that Porik mentioned there is, um, and one of the questions was about a lotto. Now there's different ways of doing a lotto, and Marion will deal with those later on. But as I said, documented procedures are very very important. And um, documented procedures isn't a whole book on anything. Have it, you do your minutes of your meeting. You just outline the procedure and, and, and in, in your minutes, if it's a big issue. And I, I think I just took from a club um, the, the, um, the procedures that are in, in place in one club for their lotto. What night it's done, how much it is. Is it done online? Is it done whatever? So, um, and I'm talking about merged teams. That's not probably relevant or um, to handball clubs. Maybe uh, not too sure on that. Um, but um, if there is, it's it, it should be managed. And if there is, we'll say two clubs coming together. I don't think there would be Porik or John in 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 GA in in handball clubs where you have to merge to get numbers together like we would in, G, in we'll say in a hurling club. Yeah. So just that's that's governance. It's it's not anything exciting. It's basically minuting, working properly, and and uh, recording what you, how things are done, how things are agreed in your club, how they should be done. One thing I want, Kathy, can we go back on that? Just certainly, yeah. The one thing that I that sticks out with me, and I meant to mention it earlier, and Kathy said it: update policy documents. I think that you should have policies for all major financial decisions that you do in your club. You also should have a policy of don't sign blank checks. Have a policy, there must be two signatures. Have a, And once they're minuted, and you can update them on a regular basis, but policies can be three or four lines or no big deal. But it means that when you decide as a club to go a certain route, have don't have a policy for sweeping a floor, like that would be a waste, but have policies for how you pay, that you must have a document, a corresponding document when you're paying a cheque. You must have, when you're doing a lodgement, when you're counting money, you must have at least two people. So I'm saying update your policies and make policies and update them as often as need be. I just think that's an important one. Yeah. Okay. Where are we now, Cathy? We're going on to the, the lotto. The lotto. A club lotto. A club lotto. All, um, we, we, both of us will come in on this one, but all clubs running a lotto must have a lotto license unless the draw, the draw is confined to members. Now, no lotto should be confined to members because you get nothing. Lotto jackpots restricted to 30,000 in 26 counties and the position in the six counties we would need to clarify. Now, there's two ways to run your club lotto. I'll just come in, Marion, if you yes, don't mind. Please, um, please. There's the gambling laws in the six counties are there's there's um, a focus on trying to update them. They're very um, limited and restrictive. So I don't know if we have two, we have a, a number of officers from um, the six counties, and as I said, it, it is much more restrictive. But there is work underway to update the the gambling and lotteries laws in in the north 
as a matter of fact, I think they're quite lenient in the UK, but it's in the north that they're very strict and haven't been updated in some time. But I know there's work underway with Stormont and the minister in that regard. So just to let you know where, um, if, if anybody has a specific query, I have got some advice with regard to it, but it is quite restrictive if you want to set up a, a lotto in the north at the moment. It might be better off waiting for the updated um, the updated um, government um, legislation. Okay, thank you, Cathy. Now, this, as we said there, there a few moments ago, there are two ways to run the lotto. Numbered envelopes are online. Now, I speak on the numbered envelopes method. I would sincerely, I'll, I'll give you a situation and then I'll tell you why it's important to have a policy. There was a club that I, I'm familiar with and their lotto jackpot was at 7,000. And that's a lot for a club. So they didn't have any winners. According, there's a, There was a team um, that meet on a weekly basis to check all the envelopes. And that was done. Everything was perfect. They put out the numbers on uh, in the papers and then their club notes. And somebody rang the chairman and said, I had those numbers. And uh, I should have got my 7,000. So the chairman uh, asked the team to go back to, and look at the envelopes again. And you should keep the envelopes at least six weeks. And they still never didn't get a winner. It transpired that this person did buy the lotto in a local shop. And she did have the numbers. But the envelope was never handed in to the committee for checking on the Sunday night. It wasn't a, a why it can be a, two things that they forgot or that this they maybe had a falling out with someone in the club and they didn't feel like doing it. I don't know. But all I do know is they had to pay out that 7000 because they didn't have a policy in place. To say that only envelopes received to the committee can be deemed in the draw. So I, I myself, I didn't like it because what what is because we we depend on the shops to, to buy sell our lottos. What would stop me on a Monday morning, after I read the numbers, going into a shop and slipping an envelope down the side of a counter? Nothing. So that's why I'm saying have a policy, and only get round it that only worded in a way that only envelopes that are well with the committee on the night, on the Sunday night or whatever night, will be deemed in the draw. So that's just a bit of advice. Kathy, mm -hmm. Smart Lotto, you would know a bit more about that than I do. Well, as I said, a lot of the clubs and more and more, especially since we have had lockdown, are moving towards Smart Lotto. And if any of you are on the Western Seaboard, I'm unfortunately from the poor West. I'm not, not from Monon like the West. Of them. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I... I still do the lotto back in Galway, um, my own club, my own lotto, and they use smart lotto along with the envelopes. So, and we should be looking, and it, the way of raising funds going forward will be very much online. So there are three companies that I'm aware of. Um, my club finances, which are no, and sorry, there's four, Club Force, Smart Lotto, and Club Funder. Now, Club Funder is spelt K-L-U-B-F-U-N-D-E-R. You can look at those. The costs of setting it up varies um, and they're negotiable generally. So I'd leave it to no doubt you're probably better negotiators than I would be. So to negotiate the fees, some of them charge a setup fee and then a, a smaller transaction fee. Some of them have a very small setup fee and a higher transaction fee. So you have to look at what's best suitable to yourselves. But as I said, they're 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 there and they have they have all the structure and you just send out your I get an email every week um, and I automatically go in to see who did somebody win it last week. And then you're you're going to do it. Press pay pay up, has my bank account details and takes my money. So it's a very handy way of doing it and it's it's probably the way forward. Um uh, clubs haven't jumped on that line because the old way of doing the envelopes uh, is easier. It's probably more clubs raise more money that way. But um, 
as I said, it's worth considering um, doing the smart, the doing the online stuff. Now, um, just I suppose we're talking fundraising and we're talking a lot of. Um, I think um, I, I was speaking last night with Clon Credo and all the different sports and how they're addressing fundraising and the concerns they have over fundraising at the present time. And, you know, they came up with ideas like online quizzes. Marion is a quizzer on those. Huh? <laughs> um, auctions online, shave or die online. So like we might be confined um, and restricted in our movements at the present time, but we shouldn't be restricted on um, how we raise money and opportunities to raise money. You see all the charities have made substantial, um, have, have raised substantial funding to, throughout the lockdown. Pieta House, clubs are, G GA clubs, handball clubs are all supporting these. But we need to start looking at ways of, you know, new ways of raising money for ourselves. And the old ways, I mean, the lotto is, and the bingo are the stalwarts of every club. So, as I said, maybe combining online with the envelopes, um, combining, uh, as I said, and looking at new ways, you know, we're not going to have a Strictly Come Dancing whilst this pandemic is 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 um, not under control. So, but we, like, there are opportunities and I'm sure ye is a, probably know more and have come up with better ideas than I'd ever come up with. But um, I've heard of some good ones around the country. Marion, you might have another few ideas or maybe if you have any ideas there or something that worked last year for you that you can't repeat this year, <laughs> it might be an idea for some other person in another club. Um, if Just take yourselves off mute and, and join us just rather than going through all the slides. I think it's worth talking about fundraising activities and different ways of fundraising. Has anybody any suggestions? We might, I think in the pack, there's a few there's a few um, ideas, but they're, you know, lotto, membership. We've addressed two of those already. Um, mine is another one coming up. I think we mentioned it at the seminar in January. Um, uh, Cathy, um, I'll, come, I'll come in there. Yeah. A neighbouring club asked me to do one with them. It was called the Oscars. Um, yes. It's a fabulous um, concept. Yeah. I suppose the, the unique selling point of it is the people that take part in it, like myself, everything's done before the night begins. So you're, there's no pressure on you on the actual night. And it's easy to say yes to do. It takes four weeks training of one night a week. And each person that um, comes to get gets involved, they have to raise, I think it was 300 euro. They had about 60 to 70 people raising 300 euro. Then they were selling tickets for the grand night at 25 euro and a raffle on the night as well. I'm not sure of the exact figure, but I think it was around 40 to 45,000 they raised on, on the night. I, and, and as I said, they're, they're, you can do an Oscars this year. You might not be able to do it the following year, you, you know, but you, you might be able to do it every couple of years. But it's the Oscars was a singing competition or a dancing competition, was it? What, what had you to do? Oh, basically what we, we do. What did you sign up for? <laughs> it's, it's, you're actually reenacting a film. So I was right. in Michael Collins. So there was maybe 10 or 12 of us in our film and we practiced that and then we do went away and, and we shot the scene. It took, it took me the full... Did you do the shooting? Oh, I done a bit of shooting, yeah. <laughs> I missed. <laughs> but yeah. it was brilliant. Like we don't pick them at seven or eight films and then you dress up in your dicky bow on the night and you go and then there's all awards for best Oscar, best actor, best sporting actor, actresses. Brilliant night, brilliant night. And did you get a company to, to do the training with you? Yeah. Um, was the outlay for that just? I can't remember. It was Kevin Rowe Entertainments was the name of the company. And yeah. they sent down one of the boys out of Fair City. Mondo, I think his name was. And he yeah. was sort of coaching us how to act. We was, was brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. We, we, uh, we, in actual fact, um, <coughs> Porik, we have actually applied for that this year. But it may not be happening this year. It'll be next year. But there is a company and the same company that you're talking about. I think it's something around 10, 15,000 for them to do it, but you're still going to end up, if you put the effort in, 
you're going to end up with 40 profit. There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. And that's that would carry a club a long way. Yeah. And what they did was the club, I don't know, it was Kilkerley, so they're allowed, they're only 10 minutes over the road, but they, they, they act <coughs> neighbouring clubs because the people I'd be asking for money is not the same people that people in, in their club. So they, they spread it out, which was a very good idea, I thought. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a great one. And as I said, they all, you know, they've, they've been proven um, fundraising fundraisers for clubs, proven fundraisers. And, um, you know, da- <clears throat> Dancing with the Stars is the same idea as well. Can I just mention there, and, and and you mentioned, I don't know what company it was, but I don't know what, whatever company you bring in like that, it's important that they have their own insurance. We don't want them falling on, on the stage in the GA property and uh, the claims going up. But anyway, um, the, whilst <clears throat> the fundraiser itself might be covered, the GA lads might be covered, but make sure that they have their own fundraiser and get on to Sinead just to make sure that that is covered if you are doing those fundraisers or any of the other fundraisers. And the other things that work very well and is um, the 5K um, cycle, the 5K runs and all that, the 10K runs and, you know, you know, and, and you register online and you're getting, you're kind of going out of the normal, we'll say people that you're hitting for money all the time. You know, you have people that, you know, like to do a race and like to get their times, you know, and all of that. So it's worth looking at those options. And another thing is donors and the donation scheme and the tax donation scheme, and I'll come to that later. But, you know, often people give donations to clubs and it's important to acknowledge those people. And at a time like this, you know, you might think, well, you know, if they're if there's no point if they're in a pub and the pub is closed, they're not making any money. There's no point in that sending them a letter if that's the case. But they might be in a business that is, you know, benefiting from the lockdown, making PPE equipment or something. And and um, you know, so you know, know know who your donors are, keep in touch with them. And um, as I said, it's important to tell them what you're doing, what your plans are, and look for funding that way. Does anybody else want to come up with better ideas than we have the, now? Because the, national, the national, the annual lotto is a good one, you know, as apart from the weekly one. But the annual one where somebody would pay, well, it'd pay 80, 90, 100 euro a year, once a year. That's a great way of getting money in. And um, signs, if you, if you round the pitch, round your pitches, okay, your pitches may be owned by your clubs, but you could also get signs and you can get, at least a couple of hundred every year for those signs. Mm. Mm. But there's a lot. In actual fact, it'd be a good idea, Porik, if myself and Kathy would put some ideas and you could send it out with the pack. As many ideas as possible. Yep. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, Kathy? Right. And this, this is another fundraiser. Um, and I think Ashling mentioned this as our um, seminar in, in January. Marion, do you want to go through the National yeah. Club draw? Yeah. The National Club draw is a no-brainer. How every club, football and handball, should take part in this draw. All the funds, all, all the prizes are given free by Park and Crokey. The tickets cost 10 and every 10 that you sell, you keep it. It's a, I can't stress enough, it's a no-brainer. My, our club, uh, my club, um, local club, we had eight or nine thousand from it this year. I would like to see us even getting more, but it really it sells itself. The prizes are excellent, and they don't cost a penny. Yeah, yeah. The, the prizes are put up. To be fair, at um, by Central Council of the GA, and we've welcomed any handball club to participate. I know a number of them do, so it's um, as I said, it's, it'll be going ahead next year as well. We haven't a date set yet, but. The tickets are going out generally around August, all things going well. Um, we'll be getting them out as well. So, as I said, it's Ashling Greenan, who you met at the, the forum, the last forum, the Boric, um, that coordinates the National Club draw. Um, I think we've no other fundraising ideas, but there's, I'm sure there are loads of other ones there. Just we'll go back to governance and regulatory obligations and the tax man. And it's important we are exempt as an amateur sports body, be it you part of a GA club or 
a handball club because they had, you know, are part of the same exemption um, from income tax, corporation tax, stamp duty. We're not exempt from PAYE or we're not exempt from VAT. If a handball club is, um, has a bar beside it and the bar has a turnover of over 75,000, they have to register for VAT. But normal stuff done by the handball club is exempt, but it's important that you apply for the exemption. And um, that exemption is now done online. In the six counties, clubs are exempt from income tax as well, but mu must pay corporation tax and stamp duty. The under CASC, Community Amateur Sports Club exemption, they um, have exemptions and maybe even exempt from um, rates in that regard. But again, they're not exempt from PAYE and whatever, and clubs must register for that if the turnover is over 83,000 in the north. So there's slight variations there. But as I said, apply for the exemption, apply for CASC if you can, if you're in, in, the, in, in the six counties. And um, uh, as I said, ensure that you're doing things properly and in line with revenue guidelines. Um, the new application, to be fair, for if you haven't applied for the exemption, um, and it's also exempt from capital gains tax, and um, I don't normally publicise this one, but anyway, um, if you're ever make if you're ever making your will, you might like to leave money to the GA club or to the handball club. That's exempt. That's the same as leaving it to a charity. If the club have applied for their exemption. So when you're all making your will and we're all worried about how we're going to get through this crisis, just think of the handball club while you're doing it. <laughs> that's, that's very dour now, isn't it? <laughs> on an evening like this. <laughs> I haven't got that on the slides. <laughs> and maybe Porik, I don't know whether you should circulate it or not. But anyway. <laughs> but apply online for your exemption and it, it outlines there how you go about it. Um, and if anybody has a problem there, come on to me. Um, be conscious also of employment law and probably at the present time, health and safety requirements. When when we did this presentation, health and safety was, wasn't top of the priority, but now with social distancing requirements, um, people entering our clubs, etc. It's, it's a very, very important and also child protection issues. Now, there's there's different, we'll say, modules of training specifically to deal with certain areas there. So I'm not going to go into them, but be, just be conscious of those and be conscious of insurance issues as well, which is a separate module. But when you are doing your fundraiser and all those things, no harm in checking with insurance that everything is covered because our insurance bills are going up and up and up. Clubs at the moment can't are struggling to afford to pay their insurance bill, and um, as I said, we still need our insurance. Unfortunately, no matter whether we're locked closed down or not, so I, I'd I'd be conscious of, you know, if we are all a little bit more con conscious of avoiding the claim and um, dignifying ourselves, we'd be better, you know, we'd be better off financially. OK, I'll come in on this one, the GA Development Fund deposits. Clubs are encouraged to deposit money in the Development Fund in Crow Park as they will get priority if they're making an application for a loan. Cathy will come in later just on the current situation. The variable interest rate is also currently 1.9. You don't pay any dirt. A million deposit requires a thousand. And forms for deposit Depositing into the fund can be obtained from a member of the National Finance Department in Crow Park. Now, this 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 is a very valuable fund. So, if uh, any uh, handball club who's in is talking to us tonight, if any of you have surplus funds, funds for maybe a draw or development, put it into the development fund in Crow Park, and you will get one. Where will you get one point nine percent only there? I would very much encourage it. And uh, if you need any more information on it, who better to ask than Cathy? <laughs> Thanks, Marion. Well, just how we use that fund. And, and as I said, 
I think one of the questions was the development fund. That fund is used for ourselves and it's confined to the association. It's confined to the GA. Um, that's why there's no dirt on it. It's confined to our own clubs and it's it's used for giving loans out and there's certain criteria for those loans. So as the loan uh, the fund builds up, we're paying it out and we're only charging 1.9% interest. So you, again, Marion says you won't get 1.9% on your deposit anywhere for your dirt. You definitely would pay more than 1.9% to any of the banks for borrowing. So it is, it's for core GA activity. Um, it's not for bar facilities. It's not for building something that's going to be rented out. It's, we have structured this, it's, it's not a massive fund. It's made up of everybody's money and we're helping ourselves. It's like the credit union concept. And um, the interest rate applicable is 1.9%. The ground must be a vested GA ground, which most of the handball clubs would be vested. And I think in January I, heard, I addressed all the, we'll say the corporate trustee and vesting at that point. The maximum period of a loan is 10 years. There is problems at the moment because fundraising has died. Um, so we have, um, we approved some loans that had been in the pot and we won't be approving again until at least September um, and in new loans. But um, we are, because obviously we're deferring loan repayments because of, under the current circumstances. The loans, and they have only been to GA clubs to date, um, are guaranteed by the county board, the GA county board and a recommendation from the provincial council. Priority is given, as Marion said, to clubs that have money on deposit. We need, and um, I was talking to John and Porrick about this prior to the webinar commencing. Um, we need to, we need to consider a structure if clubs are interested, if handball clubs are interested in coming part of the um, in in borrowing from the GA um, development fund. It is definitely open for deposits. And I suppose if there's um, an interest in from that side of it, the National Finance Committee will look at giving, you know, loans out to GA clubs. Um, with, with one issue, but whilst our sister organisations aren't completely part of us and the, the central bank have queried it, we're a little bit slow in moving that way, but there's no issue there from because handball is very much part and parcel of you know, hurling football and handball are our games and rounders. So there should be no issue in that regard. So that's the GA Development Fund. Capital grants, the GA at Central Council provides financial support to the GA clubs for grants. It also includes development of handball facilities. Now, the, we were working prior to the crisis on uh, the, the provincial councils normally administer that fund and each of the provincial councils do it slightly differently. So we're trying to get a uniform, we're working with the provinces or, um, to get a uniform approach there and um, grow that fund. Now it obviously will be nil this year. We had a aim to get it up to 4 million, but um, 2020 with no championship and unless things change dramatically, they, there will be no grants at all this year to anybody. So um, there is there is money there for capital. It's all capital costs, like you know, a, um, a handball court or something like that, and they are in the mix for um, in in our revised and our discussion document going forward. Um, Sports capital funding, this is the government, what people call the lotto money, um, where you apply to the Department of Transport, Tourism and Sport. Um, it's important. There's only always a very narrow couple of weeks to get your applications in. So anybody that's talking about doing major work on, 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 a, on a Nally, you should register on Oscar. I would advise that you register using the GA, the handball email address because um, I've just been advised by the department that there is clubs that haven't um, drawn down their grant pre-2013 um, and there's one or two handball clubs in it. 
So we, I would advise that you get moving, that you register. And, and part of the reason being is the correspondence is sent to an email address now. Everything is email. Um, so it's important that you use your GA.email because officers move on and change, etc. So do use your email address. The detail is there to register via Oscar OS Online Sports Capital. Um, I don't know. It's it's not the same Oscars as Porik is doing there now, but um, it's called the same thing. But um, I I don't know where you get the most money from from Porik's Oscar <laughs> or from the the Online Sports Capital application um, register. So um, in Sport Northern Ireland, Sport in I also give funding for facilities. And um, I don't think that fund, which was due to open last month, opened because of the current crisis financially in the north either. But um, it's it's keeping it near for sport and I money to be coming forward. Um, I mentioned the red <coughs> donations. Um, if you have a project and if you have a donor and a donor can be for for the donation scheme, and this is where the tax um, where the club either get the POE workers tax back or if you're self-employed, you can claim the tax back on a capital project. Now it is for capital development. The minimum number amount of money is 250 euros per annum. It's a bit similar to the church one, if you're all any of you are familiar with it, but there's one big difference between the charity and the church um, donation scheme and the sports club um, scheme is that the project needs to be approved. Now that's approved in the Department of Transport and Tourism and Sport and Kerry, the same as um, uh, the same place as you apply for your Oscar, your lotto sports capital grant. So if you have, get sports capital grant, it nearly is automatic, I think, that you'd get uh, approval for the project. And it's very worthwhile or even a claiming. So, as I said, because the club not alone gets the 250 or what I suggest to clubs is that they get people to sign up by standing order for 25 euros a month. And it the tax, if their POA work comes back into the handball club or the GA club for the project. Um, what you call it. So that is the donation scheme in in this 26 counties. And um, I think that document is in the pack as well. We'll double check what's in that pack for it before we issue it. Yep. Um, maybe no, to be no, fair, Marilyn Mar Mar address the North. You were going to say something and I interrupted you, Kathy. What is no, no, I was just going to say that you'll, you, you, the the situation in the North is slightly is slightly different slightly. and Marilyn has a better handle on that. Well, um, the gift aid, uh, for to get gift aid in Northern Ireland, it doesn't have to be a defined project, but the unit must be registered as either a charity or under CASC. The P, the per, the PE putting money into the club must be a private taxpayer and not a company. And the financial records and bank statements have to be provided to show the income. Now there's restrictions. There must not be any benefit in kind, the minimum subscription is 250 and HM, HRMC are continually scrolling and watching websites and I'll tell you why. There was a club in Northern, a, a club in Northern Ireland and they were, they were applied under CASC for uh, gift aid and believe it or not, they put it on their website, join our, our program and you can you'll get a coat and you'll get free into the matches etc etc needless to say the hrmc caught this on they must have somebody employed just to do nothing else only stroll through these sites and not alone did they not give them the gift aid for a particular year but they went back maybe five or six years and they had to pay the money back so it's important for northern ireland clubs no benefit in kind well, and definitely no benefit in kind stated on websites. And okay, Cassie? Yeah, to be fair, there's no benefit supposed to be given in the in 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 the 26 either. But um, I've never heard of a club in the 26 being um, being caught up in that. Um, but then, as I said, donation scheme. People just generally sign up to the project. Now, um, leader money. 
Uh, Cathy, there's just a question there for the yep. GA fund. I don't know if you can have your chat. Oh, hold on, I open my chat, yeah. 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 Green Castle, there must have plenty of money. And there, is there a maximum? Is there a maximum amount? No, no, no. I, 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 there's, there's no maximum whatsoever. To be fair, um, uh, no club, counties have used it in saving for major projects, etc. Um, the highest um, investment we had in it was 10 million. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, wasn't <laughs> that wasn't from a club. That wasn't from a GA unit that undertook a huge development. <laughs> anyway, to be fair, um, Cork, um, before they uh, undertook the development in Porky Kiev, had their money in the development fund. Um, and as I said, there was 10 million, so there's no maximum. So any amounts, any any amounts, it's not a current account. What we're saying is it's, um, but we do give, we just ask for, you know, generally 10 days notice to be able to get it back. Um, we're saying if club lottos were put into it, we could work on maybe trying to get it back before the 10 days. So. Uh, as well, uh, and it, it'll be in the documentation. If you want to uh, invest in this fund, and I would recommend it, uh, it, there are certain documentation to be completed, and one of that is that there must be two signatories. It must have gone through a club meeting. It wouldn't be up to one person in your club to make a decision like that without a committee decision. That'd be important. Yeah, and we look for a copy of the accounts just to ensure that it's club funds. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> now just on the, the European grant money, DERA, it's called DERA, the Department of Arts, some, no, I'm not. I'm lost. Greencastle might be able to help me here again. Arts, environment, and rural affairs. I think, and leader. It's called in the 26. It's the same funding from Europe. It's for rural development, and for community facilities. When they withdrew the common agricultural or reduced the common agricultural policy money to the farmers, there was a concern that these rural communities would. Um, Vanish and um, the funding was put aside for community development. So the different leader companies look at things in different ways and, and state that, you know, it, it, there's a, it's defined that it's not for pitch development. But there's no, nothing wrong that it'd be for a clubhouse, including a, a handball court, um, if you can apply to leader funding. Now that's coming to a close this year. Um, and they probably will renew it again. Um, I'm hearing that the focus would be on more environmental developments going forward, but there is a bit of money left with Leader and Dara companies that has to be drawn down shortly. So <clears throat> in that regard, um, it's just, just to be conscious of that and CLOR funding as well, but that's for specific areas, but just Google CLOR, C-L-A-R in the 26th, and there might be funding there. Um, borrowing from financial institutions. It's important that you don't borrow more than you can repay. Um, and there's different places you can borrow from. You can borrow from the pillar banks, <coughs> Bank of Ireland, Ulster Bank, where, who else have we? We have KBC, I don't want to exclude any one of them. Um, permanent TSB, we have our credit unions. And there's two other ones that I want to draw to your attention that offer money to clubs and they're Concredo and uh, Community Finance or Ulster Community Investment Trust use it. And they are very, their interest rates might be a little bit higher, but they're um, very conscious of the social impact of funding and what it does for community and social, um, the impact it has on social and on, on, on the social impact. So they do deal with GA clubs and handball clubs um, and, and uh, sporting clubs in general, as well as Meals on Wheels and all those other great community efforts. They're used to dealing with community affairs, but it's so important that you have your financial statements, you have your budgets, you have your approval and handball, I'm sure, have the same requirement to approve borrowings as the GA has that you don't <coughs> charge the assets of the of the club without the approval of of um of your handball council 
um, that you just some some officer comes along one day and borrows two hundred thousand and it's not paid for. Um, the next officer he resigns the next year and the poor the rest of the officers are left to pick up the tabs. So it's in that context that that approval is required. Um, you apply for borrowings through your trustees. Your property is held by trustees, and your trustees are indemnified. So if there are borrowings done <coughs> by um, handball clubs or GA clubs, they're indemnified. The trustees are indemnified under Rule 5.3e. So that's um, now just personal guarantees. Sorry, mine. Uh, we personal gu personal guarantee should never be entered. To be fair, you're. It's not your funding, and you shouldn't be obliged. To, we ask any of these entities that they accept the assets of the club to be um, used as collateral rather than personal guarantees. And just be careful when you are signing bank documentation or financial institute documentation that there isn't personal guarantees in it. Um, <clears throat> we're back into another, I suppose, downturn in the economy. But we're only just recovering from the last one. And I'm saying that with, when you see men, grown men, older men in tears over not realising that they had signed personal guarantees and been brought to court in their positions in GA clubs. There, so, so it has been known in the past that certain organisations or institutions, financial institutions, will push you to the limit for a personal guarantee. Avoid it at all costs, as Cathy said, because you're not indemnified, but the trustees are. <clears throat> I want to thank I want to thank the chairperson in Greencastle for yeah. the Department of Agricultural Environment and Rural Affairs. Uh, anyway, um, just it's, I appreciate I appreciate that I get I get mixed up every time. And to be fair, Ulster Community Investment Trust, and we have. Structured agreements with usage and community finance with regard to borrowings, you know, that they you know, they don't look for personal guarantees, etc. You know, that's and, and that would cross over to the handball club. Um, so char charges when when you are borrowing and when you are applying for sports capital funding, there's generally a charge put on your property. So, and, and that's leading into one of the questions later on. It's the owners of the property that need to be the applicant. So, to, to enable the charge to be put on the property. So, again, I'll, I'll come back to that. So, sorry, did I, did I jump forward there? No, no, it's fine. This, that's the next one. Yeah. So, <coughs> I'll let Marion just... There's one, there's a portal, a GA Learning Portal. It will give, it'll answer any question you have on finances. It, it covers a multitude, but any uh, any questions that you would have on club planning, club officer training, club resources, etc., etc., just log on to learning.ga.ie forward slash administrator. It's a wonderful um, den of information. Hi, <coughs> right, Kathy, where are we? Now we're going to um, the question. Of, um, yeah. We're looking for feedback, and we're learning here tonight as a. There, well, this I think is my second effort on a, a webinar, and um, we'd appreciate your feedback on 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 what the content should be, or what you'd like to see more of, or less of, or whatever. And um, I want to the chairperson in Greencastle. I don't know who he is, but anyway, um, I appreciate your assistance, and he's going on to another webinar. Um, so, um, term, a link with Clore, the Termakiti Hurling Club Facebook has a link with Clore. Yeah, it's the Department of Rural Affairs and... Um, oh, Cathy, sorry, I, I yeah. actually have an email to send out on that tomorrow to clubs. So, it's in phase two of Clore. Um, it's specific yeah. to outdoor um, recreational spots. So, if you were to do up an outdoor alley, we'll say, or an outdoor handball alley, and uh, that would fall under the CLAR program this year. So there will be an email going out to clubs tomorrow on that. So if they just kind of watch out for that, the, the links will all be in that. Yeah, okay, yeah, exactly. Thanks very much, John. And I, that was just announced by the minister yesterday. Yeah, I can't stress enough that your feedback is very important to us as presenters 
and to us as an association, because we want to, do, to give and offer advice to you in what you need. So it's awfully important if there was something we missed out on or something that we had too much of, just go into your learning.ga.ie officer feedback. We won't be annoyed in the least if you say something negative, and I don't think anybody can say anything ne ne negative because we're all working from the same background. So please do the feedback. It's awfully important to, to the people that organise these webinars. OK, Cassie, we're going to the next questions. Yeah, so and to be fair, I appreciate the, the clubs coming in with questions ahead of tonight. So we had a quick, quick look of, at them beforehand. So a club within a football club. Can you apply for grants? And I, this is where normally there's normally a requirement for a charge to be put on the property, be it leader. I'm not too sure the new claw um, thing, but be it sports capital funding. So it the, the charge needs to be put on the owner of the property. So if you're part of the overall ground and the alley is here and the football pitch is here, and it's all owned by the GA club, it means that you. you it's best that it's done. The applicant has to be the owner of the property to, for the charge to be done. But as I said, you can work with your football club or be it GA club or hurling club or whatever to apply for that. So that's one of the questions. I don't know if there's anything. Um, do you need a separate handball account to GA club accounts? Not as a matter of fact, the less accounts there are, the better. The less and, and one one bank account, one set of accounts one audit fee, one set of controls. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, and, and clubs are always, you know, oh, the hurlers want a separate account and the footballers want a separate account and the handballers want a separate account. But from <coughs> a financial management perspective, it's best have one account. Um, and within the one account um, and, and presenting your accounts at an AGM, there's no harm in doing a schedule and further detail on the handball costs and the handball income, the handball. But the way forward in the one club model is that we're all working together. And this is the whole idea. Marion is a volunteer for the association, giving her time, loves football and loves handball. And I don't know about her, Marion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking the disamendment on that one. I do love hurling, by the way. But when I, but just to, in addition to what Kathy said, if you are a club within a GEA club, if it's a one one model, insist that someone from the handball community sits on the executive. That, you know, that's what I'm thinking, and let it be let it be an item on the agenda for all for the monthly meetings. Okay, Kathy. Yeah, that's so I, I'm, I'm not sure. As I said, these questions are good. We're looking at starting a club lotto. I want to know the process. Well, as I said, the guidelines agreed in a minute. Sit down with there'll be just somebody else. Some other clubs you'll start. What day you're going to do it? How much you're going to charge? What night you're going to do it? Are you going to do it online? Are you going to do it with envelopes, numbered envelopes? Are you going to do it combined? You know, who's going to, who in the club is going to go about getting whatever. So you minute all that. And then you can pull the minute out. And that's your policy on, on lottery. And as I said, there's a few guidelines. Marion addressed that earlier on. I think Marion also addressed is auditing certification of club accounts a mandatory requirement or just best practice. Um, a minimum that accounts are certified. An oversight, independent certification. An audit is quite an expensive um, requ requirement. We do insist in the GA that all of the county boards are audited. Um, we don't insist we do say recommending for the bigger clubs that they are audited, but um, an independent certification probably for the smaller and the small hand handball clubs. So I think that Marion addressed that earlier on. Um, is there such funding for a facility that could be both a hurling wall and a one wall? Yes, the GA, <clears throat> we're part of the GA club. What are our best options? Well, uh, Oscar, uh, the online sports capital application, assuming you're in the 26 counties, um, 
the, the Lotto Sports Capital application. You make application there for a grant aid. You make application then through your provincial council for funding. And isn't it a great idea to see a hurling wall and a one wall? Uh, do you see any envisage any issue there, Marion, or no. hurling wall and one wall? I think it's a great concept yeah. that you could be playing hurling one side of it and uh, um, handball on the other side of it, or different times or different slots. Um, what is the difference between the GA Capital Grant and the GA Development Fund? The GA Capital Grant is a grant for doing development. The Development Fund is a, a fund where clubs deposit money and clubs borrow money from. So one is a grant and the other is a loan. It, just to go back on one of the questions, could you put, give me the slide before yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> if you're looking starting a club lot and want to know the process, uh, we have you will be getting out a list of all people that that uh, provide this service. But I would recommend, and I've done it myself because my club is hoping to do this an ideal opportunity to do it online. Uh, somewhere, somebody in your county who have already gone through the process, ring them, ask them what are the pros and cons. You, I got two clubs in Monaghan and they were gave me invaluable help. So if you know a club that's already doing it, you'll know that from the club notes. Ring them up and ask them for a bit of advice because they would have gone through all the pros and cons. It would just speed up the process. OK. The life, the 36, whether it's 36 numbers or 40, there's and, and, and there's bigger risk there. And as I said, nobody knows it better probably than the clubs. I Marion has organised the club lotto. You have set it up in Emmy Vale. Yes, so. Yeah. Um, the, how, how many numbers do you have? Is that Marion? 28. 28, yeah. And some have gone to 32 and 36. Yeah. In the probability, you see, they've less chance of winning then. Marion's yeah. soft, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I always go straight off to now. <laughs> That's the total of the questions. I, I, you can open up your mics if there's any other further questions, if you haven't you have gone to sleep on us. <laughs> we have a shy bunch, uh, Cathy. Are they shy? Uh, I think so. I... I I am all all I'd like to say is as a treasurer in my club, it's very rewarding. It's a labor of love. And if you do things simply and the right way, you'll never go wrong. And I'm saying enjoy the role in your club, whether you're part of a GA club or a, a one <clears throat> one club model or on your own, enjoy it. But at all times, put put policies and procedures in place to protect yourself and to do this and to have good governance. That would be my advice for tonight. Good. Any questions, folks? Doesn't look like it. Listen, if anybody wants to send in questions, email them into me next couple of days. If you think of something and I'll get on to the to the two girls and we, we'll get it we'll get an answer. Is that okay, Cathy? Right. Yeah, that'll be great and welcome many and we'll try and be as helpful as possible. I just want to say Carmel and Margaret and I want to Thank Marion, who, as I said, gives of her time for all of these, well, nights, winter nights in January and now webinars in, <laughs> in May. Um, and as I said, has a wealth of experience from from being on the ground. And as I said, her, her comments there about doing things simply, doing things right, protecting yourself, keeping a record um, and minuting things and minuting procedures is invaluable, is invaluable. What makes me enjoy it so much is Porik calling us two girls. <laughs> Thank I, you. I, I was going to ignore that. We were going to stop lying, Mary. <laughs> oh, God. I enjoyed that. Thank I'm, just happy, you, I'm just happy you got on, Marion. Huh? I'm just happy you got on. <laughs> You're not the only one. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Okay. Listen, folks, that's, that's it. Um, I want to just thank. Cathy and Marion for their excellent presentation and sharing some of the, the knowledge that they have. Um, I suppose we in the National Office felt that finance is a very important part of running our clubs and we'll keep in touch with Cathy and Marion. I have no doubt we'll pick their brains again not too distant future. So, girls, thank you very much. <laughs> 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 <laughs>